All right, folks, we will go ahead and get started. Welcome. My name is Leslie Shot Dre, and I'm the Associate Dean of Students and Director of the Center for Fraternity Sorority Life. And we are delighted that you've chosen to join us today for our Fraternity Sorority Life 101 session, Go Beeves, Go Greek. Please note the session is re recorded, so we'll be posting the recording on our website for others to view who might have missed this live webinar session. Um, in my role as Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life, I am one of three full-time professional staff members that works day-to-day -day with our fraternity and sorority community. We have an engaging and highly informative session uh, planned for you today where you're going to meet each of our three staff as well as five of our student leaders from our community. But before we turn it over to our students, I want to let my colleagues introduce themselves. Hello everyone, my name is JP Peters and I'm the Associate Director for the Center for Fraternity and Sorority Life. Know that Oregon State strongly values the relationship between our chapters and the university. And we formalize this relationship through our annual partnership agreement called our Relationship Statement. This document outlines the basic expectation of our chapters and also what OSU <laughs> provides to support our chapters. Chapters meet criteria by attending events and hosting programs throughout the school year that further develop our members. If you'd like to learn more, you can refer to page five on our publication that's online or go to our website, oregonstate.edu slash CFSL under About Us tab. I'm excited that you all are here to join us and yeah, it's great. So I'll pass it over to Kelsey. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey Elam Guiding and I'm the coordinator in the Center for Fraternity and Sorority Life. Think to, today you'll hear from our student leaders and they'll provide an in-depth overview of our community. Uh, they'll describe our community's values and our, their joining processes. The presentation is about 20 minutes long and we'll have some time at the end for question and answer. You'll see on your screens there's a Q&A button down at the bottom if you're joining us on a computer or a phone. Um, so go ahead and type your questions in there and we'll be monitoring that and at the end of the presentation um, our staff will assist our, the students in answering those questions for you. Um, also feel free to use the chat if you have any questions um, in the meantime and we will try to help you answer those. I see there is a question about a call-in number um, on your confirmation email when you registered for today. There should be some information about the call-in number. Um, I'll also try to track that information down on my end. Um, oh and then JP just added the call-in number right there so thank you so much JP. Um, so I'll now turn it over to our student leaders who will introduce themselves and start the presentation. Thanks again so much for being here with us today. Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie and I'm the Executive Director of the Multicultural Greek Council. I'm here hearing and I'm originally from Albuquerque, New Mexico. You'll get here from more of today and as you can see, we each are interacting. If you'd like to follow along, my 2020 20, 20, website. And I'll post a link of publication in chat. Publication covers general information about the community and joining processes, along with the of our recommended chapters. There's also a lot of information on our website. Go to oregonstate.edu cfl to view frequently asked questions, learn about joining, and to see our chapter profiles for each of our groups. Hello everyone, my name is Alex and I'm the Vice President of Recruitment for the Panhellenic Council. I'm a senior studying English Literature and I'm originally from Portland, Oregon. Fraternity and Sorority Life has a rich legacy at OSU. The community has been established for over 138 years as we were established in 1882. 16% of the total undergraduate student body at OSU are Fraternity and Sorority members, which comes out to almost 3,000 men and women of the undergraduate student population. We currently have 45 chapters at Oregon State University and our community grows more each year. Our first Greek-lettered organization was Alpha Tau Omega Fraternity, but the chapter only lasted about six months due to the isolated nature of OSU in 1882. In 1915, Alpha Chi Omega Sorority became the first national sorority on campus, which is still on campus today. During the same year, Sigma Alpha Epsilon and Kappa Sigma Fraternities joined OSU as well. Hello everyone, my name is Bennett and I'm the Vice President of Recruitment Programming for the Interfraternity Council. I'm a junior studying Business Administration and I'm originally from Napa, California. Uh, now we will introduce each community and governing council and I'll start with the Interfraternity Council or the IFC. The IFC is a fraternity only governing body for the traditionally housed K-12 
fraternities on campus. The IFC has 22 chapters and all recognized chapters are listed in the publication. 17 of our 22 chapters have chapter houses, so there are unhoused options for students as well. Our largest chapter has 130 members and our smallest chapter has eight. The average chapter size is 15 men per chapter. All fraternities with a house have a live-in advisor called a house director or resident advisor. And many of our chapters are offering scholarships that incoming students can apply for over the summer. Be sure to monitor your email and check out our website for more opportunities on how to apply. The Multicultural Greek Council serves members of multicultural fraternities and sororities, including Latinx, Asian interest, and Native American-based chapters. While each of our groups have an affinity view that's connected to, our found, to their founding, each also strongly connects to a multicultural identity. We currently have three Latino Latina chapters, one South Asian fraternity, one Native American sorority, and coming to campus this fall, Lambda Phi Epsilon, an Asian interest fraternity. Chapter sizes are typically smaller, but our groups are always looking to grow. None of the multicultural groups have chapter houses, but often meet at one of our cultural resource centers on campus, such as the Native American Longhouse, the Asian Pacific and Cultural Center, and more. Our council has a strong connection to social justice principles, and you don't have to identify as a member of a certain cultural group to join one of our chapters. All are welcome and encouraged to explore what our chapters have to offer. Uh, I will also be talking about the National Panhellenic Council, or the Divine Nine, which is a council that encompasses the historically African-American fraternities and sororities. Both fraternities and sororities make up the membership of NPHC. There are a total of three NPHC chapters that are currently have undergraduate members, including two NPHC fraternities, Phi Beta Sigma and Kappa Alpha Psi, one NPHC sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha, and we have an additional five chapters that have charters at OSU, but don't currently have undergraduate members. There are still opportunities to join these in active chapters. If you have questions, refer to the information in the publication on our website. None of the NPHC chapters have, have chapter houses, um, but often meet at the Lonnie B. Harris Black Cultural Center here on campus. Chapter sizes for NPHC chapters are typically smaller, but chapters are eager and willing to grow and are still very active on campus. And like MGC, you don't have to be African American to join NPHC. Chapters are inclusive and welcoming to people of all backgrounds. PHC is a sorority only governing council for our traditionally housed sororities on campus. We currently have 11 Panhellenic chapters and all of our chapters have houses near campus. All chapter houses have house directors that live in the chapter to support women through the academic year. Our largest chapter has 125 members, our smallest chapter has 100 members, and our average chapter size is around 115 women per chapter. Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine. I'm the VP of Public Relations for the Collective Greek Council, or CGC. I'm a senior studying human development and family science, and I'm, gonna, I'm originally from Lake Los Angeles, California. I'm gonna share some information with you about, how, about Collective Greek Council, which is a special and unique element of our OSU community. CGC chapters are groups that have various academic interests for their membership and are generally connected to one of the academic colleges or majors at OSU. We currently have four CGC chapters that each have their own distinct identity. One engineering-based sorority, one design interest sorority, one science-based sorority, and one agricultural-based sorority. Two of these organizations are founded here at OSU and remain the only chapters of their organization. Our largest chapters have 60 members and our smallest chapter has 30. The average size of our chapters are about 50 members. 50 members. None of the CGC chapters have chapter facilities, but are strongly connected to colleges and departments and often meet in the buildings where the members have the majority of their classes, which can vary from chapter to chapter. At this point, I can imagine you're wondering, why should I go Greek? To help answer that question, we want to tell you about the six values of fraternity and sorority life at OSU. Since academics are the primary reason that we are here at Oregon State, it is very important to all of our chapters. Chapters are looking for students who will be able to handle all of the academic requirements of the university. Each chapter has strict GPA requirements to join, as well as, it's in, as well as to remain in good standing as a member. Our chapters provide study tables, tutors, and scholarships to help our members be successful in the classroom. OSU also has several Greek honor societies for members with high commitment to school. After all, you are here to get an education first and foremost. Our website lists each chapter's current GPA, and each chapter's own GPA requirements for joining can also be found on the profile for each chapter. 
National statistics show that fraternity and sorority members have a higher rate of graduation as compared to those students who are not as involved. Every chapter is founded on the principle of service to others and focuses on giving back to the community. Our organizations either give time or money to a national philanthropy or community service project. Examples are the Circle of Sisterhood, Center Against Rape and Domestic Violence in Corvallis, American Cancer Society, and Make-A-Wish Foundation. The community also participates in Greek-wide service events and participated in the Corvallis Polar Plunge, benefiting the, special, the Oregon Special Olympics this past February. Last year, we contributed over 70,000 hours of service and donated over $360,000 to charity. The Greek community provides plenty of opportunities to develop your leadership skills. Within a chapter, there are a number of elected officer positions that members can hold, as well as opportunities to get involved as a new member. You can also become a leader within the governing bodies of the fraternity sorority community, like some of us are, or you can be a leader in another campus organization. We know that being Greek isn't for everyone, so if that's true for you, we urge you to get involved with with something else on campus. There are over 400 student organizations at Oregon State and there are plenty of opportunities to excel. We always encourage students to pick at least one to get involved with. Okay, now we'll need some audience participation for some fun questions. So if I could have everyone take out their phones and open up a new web browser, I'll pause to give you all just a moment. So here is our question for you. How many of our parents and audience members today are a member of a fraternity or sorority? If you have family members that are maybe watching this with you and they are alum, just tell them to put yes. If not, that's okay too. All right, so repeat for the questions. So how many of our parents and audience members today are a member of a fraternity or a sorority? Awesome. All right, we've got a few. Well, welcome back. Getting a little bit more. Very nice. Awesome. Well, we are so excited to welcome you back. As Greek alumni, we're so glad that you're here with us today and connecting your children with the community. So for our next question, we're gonna share some of the names of famous athletes, celebrities, and world leaders that are fraternity and sorority members. So that's our question. Who is a famous person that you know who is also a member of a fraternity or a sorority? You can actually just type their names. If you know their affiliation, you can also add their affiliation as well. Um, but we're just looking for famous Greek alumni. Paul Rudd, I see, very funny. Big fan of his. Betty White is also awesome. Carrie Underwood. I see Michael Jordan, Omega Sci-Fi. Eli Manning. Awesome. Michael Jordan, again, Lonnie Love. Very nice. And who else we have? Harrison Ford, MLK, Luke Bryan, Shaq, Neil Armstrong, Steve Harvey. God, it's crazy. I didn't even know some of these people were uh, Greek affiliated. So that's really cool. Thank you all for sharing. We appreciate it. Um, so for our next um, question, did you know that we have some famous people that join chapters at OSU? Can anyone name any of our famous Greek OSU alumni? Ken Austin, very good. Yes, he was a Delta Todd Delta here at Oregon State. Anyone else? Oh wait, a couple more minutes. Terry Baker, Mercedes Bates, very nice. Linus Pauling, yes. Great job, you guys. Yes, so Ken Austin, as I said, was a Delta Tau Delta here at Oregon State. Terry Baker was a Phi Delta Theta at Oregon State. Mercedes Bates was a Delta Zeta at Oregon State. Um, and let's see, I don't know Linus Pauling's affiliation, but I believe he was also Greek affiliated as well. Lonnie B. Harris, absolutely. Awesome, thank you all so much for participating. And I'm gonna hand it off to Stephanie. So friendship by far is the biggest, biggest cornerstone of Greek organizations. Students establish a very active life outside of the classroom, which makes their college career so much more rewarding. Uh, working with people in different chapters and also various staff within the university also improves your professional relationship skills. 
There are many events in which fraternity and sorority members participate together, which helps foster strong relationships as well as a good time, including family and parent weekends, leadership retreats, Greek week, formals, yard shows, competitions, and intramurals. Returning and sorority members can be found at OSU sporting events and are active participants every year in campus-wide programs. Um, being a Greek is a lifelong commitment you're making, not just for your time as an undergraduate, and it goes well beyond. Studies show that students that are having fun by participating in campus events and organizations are more likely to stay in school and be successful scholars. So before I attended OSU, I went to a smaller junior college I had a lot of friends and was super involved. Um, and my first year at OSU was really hard because I was in a new place and I didn't really have anyone to turn to. So I explored sororities in each council and was ever able to find my forever home in an MGC chapter. And since then, my sisters have been my biggest support system and the people that I've met through my community have been like my second family. Our final and perhaps most important community value is inclusivity. While our chapters do use a mutual selection process to extend and accept membership, we do strive to create a welcoming and safe environment for all students. We work to eliminate prejudice and foster an inclusive environment by promoting the fair treatment of all members and working to create opportunities for students of all backgrounds and identities to join our chapters. This is visible in the programs our chapters host the partnerships they create throughout campus and how we work together collaboratively. And we believe this is more important now than ever. Now we know there are plenty of misconceptions about fraternity and sorority life that can be found in popular media, popular media or pop culture today. We are not saying that we are perfect. However, we hope that OSU students are working hard to fight many of these stereotypes. Most of the information portraying fraternity and sorority life found in movies such as House Bunny, Animal House, or Neighbors is not an accurate picture of being Greek. These movies and TV shows tend to impact a much more skewed vision of how we are today. We hope that you will check out the chapters for yourself and make sure and make your own decisions about joining. Now we'll give a shift to an overview of recruitment and intake. So how can you join our community at Oregon State? Uh, we're going to share a number of details about events planned for the fall and just keep in mind that our events will be aligned with the most updated expectations surrounding COVID-19 so there could be some changes. Please keep checking our website and social media accounts for any updates. So if you're in interested in joining one of our 22 IFC chapters then I encourage you to first look through our publication and website. Uh, this has information on all chapters as well as contact information for each recruitment chair. And you can join chapters through a couple of methods. So the first of which is summer recruitment. Uh, many chapters will have various recruitment events throughout the summer and may be contacting you to attend their various informal events. Uh, these may consist of attending a dinner or coffee meetup with a recruitment chair or a Zoom call with chapter members. Uh, you can choose to meet with one chapter or as many as you'd like to. Know that men can accept a bid from a chapter at any time and that it is not uncommon to be offered a bid over the summer. Uh, it is up to each individual whether or not they would like to wait to join until fall recruitment. So obviously the other option is the IFC fall recruitment process that will occur September 23rd through October 6th during the first week of classes. Uh, this is your chance to get to visit all 22 chapters and then narrow down the chapters that you wish to visit again. This process is free and you can sign up today. Please check our out our website to register. So outside of fall recruitment, IFC chapters continue to hold informal recruitment events throughout the year. If you don't find what you're looking for at first in summer or fall recruitment, there is still a chance to get to know our chapters better throughout the year. Uh, join us for our IFC live Q&A session on, I believe it is July 28th, the last Wednesday of this month, excuse me, the 29th, uh, the last Wednesday of this month to learn more about the IFC experience and get your questions answered. So becoming involved in one of our multicultural Greek MGC chapters or and National Panhellenic and PhD groups is slightly different and our process is called membership intake. If you're interested in joining an MGC or NPHC sorority or fraternity on campus, the best way to get involved would be to attend as many council sponsored programs as you can. And don't be a stranger, each individual MGC and NPHC organization also hosts various programs and activities on campus. 
By attending these events, you can introduce yourself to members of the fraternity or sorority that you're interested in and let them know that you would like to learn more about the organization. And another good way to learn more about NPHC and MGC organizations will be to consult the internet. There's a wealth of knowledge on the internet about fraternities and sororities, and all MGC and NPHC organizations have a national website where you can learn tons of information on each organization as a whole. Each chapter will hold their own membership intake process, and as a general rule, several MGC and NPHC organizations don't accept students who don't have an established GPA at OSU. So it's always best to check with the individual chapters about their intake process and joining requirements. So the NPHC, I would like to invite everyone to their NPHC information and trivia night on September 29th at 7 p.m. in the Memorial Union 109. This is a free program and is an opportunity for everyone to hear about NPHC fraternities and sororities, as well as to ask questions about individual chapters. And you can RSVP to attend on their website. And MGC will also be having a meet and greet on September 23rd at 6 p.m. on the Weatherford Lawn. And you can meet members of the MGC chapters and learn about joining. And we can't wait to meet you all there. So don't forget to RSVP on our website. So uh, lastly, you can join MGC and NBHC on our um, joint live Q&A session July 22nd at 4 p.m. to learn more about the culturally based Greek experience and to get your questions answered. Like MGC and NPHC, CGC will be hosting a meet and greet. Our event will be on September 24th at 5 p.m. in the Student Experience Center Plaza. This is a great chance to meet our chapters and learn more about how to join. Each chapter will promote events as the fall term begins, so look out for Instagram posts, Facebook posts, announcements in your classes, and see your in email for updates about when these will occur. Generally, CGC chapters will have one to two weeks of events, then we'll extend the invitation for membership before beginning the new member process. Join us for our CGC Live Q&A session on July 30th to learn more about the CGC experience and meet representatives from each chapter and get your questions answered. We hope to see you there. If you're interested in joining one of our 11 Panhellenic sororities on campus, I encourage you to sign up and participate in fall formal recruitment. Formal recruitment will take place this fall beginning Tuesday, September 9th with prospective new member orientation. Events will begin Thursday, October 1st and end Tuesday, October 6th with bid day. Fall formal recruitment is the only opportunity to check out all 11 Panhellenic chapters. We utilize a mutual selection process. This means that you will narrow down your choices as the chapters are also narrowing down the women that they would like to invite back. Again, this is the only opportunity to see all 11 chapters. Many of our chapters will be full following fall recruitment for the rest of the academic year. You can sign up for fall formal recruitment online using a credit card at any time until September 28th at noon. Registration is currently $50, but will increase at the start of September, so don't delay in registering. Our costs are based on the supplies required to run the process and the rental of spaces and rooms on campus. Women participating will also receive access to an app that serves as a guide for the process. Join us for our Panhellenic Live Q&A session on July 16th at 4.30 p.m. to learn more about our Panhellenic experience and get your questions answered. Again, all of the dates for our different processes are now up on the screen. Uh, more info in the RSVP or registration forms for each of our joining processes are located in the publication and on our website. Uh, you can find the registration links for our live Q&A sessions on the website as well. Uh, please stay updated on everything fraternity and sorority life. And to do that, please check us out at social media. Uh, our Instagram handle is at OSU Greeks. In the publication online, you'll also find the social media accounts for all of our councils. Uh, here is our contact information, so if you have questions after today, please feel free to reach out. You can also join us for our virtual office hours every Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 4 p.m. and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. These office hours will take place every week until fall term, and you can ask us any questions that you may have. Again, thank you to all in attendance. Remember to check out the CFSL website for lots of info on our community and resources on how to join. Now we will be taking a few questions about fraternity and sorority life, and I will turn it back over to the CFSL staff who will be moderating. Excellent, thanks so much, Bennett. 
And thank you so much to the four of you for sharing all of this helpful information. Like Bennett shared, we're now gonna shift into time for questions and answers. And so we're gonna be directing these to our student panelists that you've been hearing from, um, as well as our staff will uh, contribute as well. And I will be helping moderate and direct them. We've also gotten a few um, uh, great questions so far. So we've started to populate these as answered in the Q&A field. And if you've had your hand raised, I would recommend to go ahead and plug your question in into the, the question and answer field so we can get those answered because we'll be looking um, there for, um, for the questions. And um, we, we likely won't get to everything and we apologize for that, but we will be posting um, answers to these questions online as well so you can follow up and find them there. I also, I've seen some questions related to COVID-19, um, and I know that that's heavy on a lot of folks' minds. So I did wanna start there um, to, to just uh, share a little bit about our community's response. So as you can all see, planning for um, fall recruitment and membership intake is fully underway. Um, and OSU Greeks will be welcoming new students to um, our community in the fall and providing these um, joining opportunities. Um, the student leaders that you've met today are all currently engaged in outlining plans that are based closely on OSU's guidance for fall term. Um, so all of our all of our processes do have um, plans that they can be delivered in hybrid models. So both in person and virtual as well as fully virtual and um, more details will be announced as the fall term nears and we encourage students and their families to visit our website for more details and then information will also be sent to anyone that's registered for one of our processes as well. Um, I will mention house fraternities and sororities as you heard from the presentation we do have 27 house chapters and each of those chapters are um, privately owned and operated and they're working to comply with our county health guidelines as well as fire department guidelines and our governor's executive orders um, and, and any other requirements that, uh, that might apply to them. But the, the uh, majority of our facilities are planning to be open for the fall term. So ultimately we're working with our students to prioritize public health best practices. Um, and uh, we are also working on expecting adherence for our um, face mask um, requirement um, because that will be required on campus in the fall as well as social distancing guidance as it uh, relates to, to gatherings. And um, we'll be addressing accountability as a community as a whole um, as we work to make sure that um, our members are safe and our future members are safe as well. So we're going to get started with a couple um, frequently asked questions and then um, we will get to a number that are posed in our chat. And our first one is, um, what is the time commitment of joining a fraternity or sorority? And I'm gonna have Stephanie um, answer this one first. So what is the time commitment of joining a fraternity or sorority? Yeah, well, for me, technically, you kind of feel like it's what you put in, you kind of get out. So there are some requirements that you're um, supposed to do for your chapter, um, but it's definitely what you want to put in. Um, so if you'd like to have a leadership position or be really involved, um, that's really a choice that you'd like to make. And then there's a lot of reward that comes with that as well. Um, but yet definitely going to chapter meetings or philanthropies, other things that are required by the chapter do take up some time. So um, definitely plan to time manage as well, um, especially uh, being a part of those and uh, wanting to be really involved. So it definitely is to how much what you want from your experience. If you want something where it's really involved, you can do that. But there are requirements that your chapter will acquire from you, like attending those meetings and being a part of those different events. Great. Thanks, Stephanie. And Jasmine, do you have anything to add? Yeah, like Stephanie said, um, it kind of depends on what you want to put, put in, you kind of get out from it. But on average, you can usually expect to maybe experience to put in about like uh, three to four hours of commitment a week. But um, really, whatever you want to uh, get out of it is what you want to put in. And it can be more hours if you would like to get really involved. So it kind of just depends on what you want to do. Great, thanks. Uh, next question is, what are the benefits of joining a fraternity or sorority? Is it just a social club? So Alex, I'm going to have you start with that one. 
So um, this is a great question and it's one that we get a lot. Um, being part of a fraternity or sorority actually offers you so many things. It offers you connection in a place that you're not familiar with. It offers you long time, um, lifelong friendships. Um, it offers you opportunities for growth. It offers you opportunities to lead. Um, and I personally love being part of a group that holds me accountable for, um, you know, turning in my work on time and, uh, you know, doing all of these things that sometimes I struggle with. It's nice to have my sisters there to be like, okay, we need to be on top of this. Remember, we got to be on top of this. So, um, so yes, I would definitely say there are so many benefits and I, yeah, it's definitely not just a social club. There's a lot more benefits to it than, than the social aspects of it. And Bennett, do you want to contribute anything to that? Yeah, I'd love to add on. So basically what I would say is that joining a fraternity or sorority is really a great way to get entrenched in the Oregon State community. Um, it's really a great way. I myself as an out of state student that came to Oregon State almost knowing nobody uh, can speak to this myself, but it really is a great way just to meet people. And aside from all the great things Alex said, it really is just a great way to build a community and get yourself comfortable at OSU. Great, thank you. All right, so Stephanie, I've got another question for you. If you can go into more depth about what it's like to join an MGC chapter. Yeah, of course. Um, similar to NPC, MGC, um, the membership intake process, um, kind of going through it is mainly about meeting and introducing yourself to different chapters and their members, just thinking that, you know, you're going to join this and you know, majority be in it for the rest of your life. Like that's the goal that we participate and be a part of it from here on out. So um, it's definitely really um, good to get to know people. You learn things that you may have known or like not known about some someone or like have a lot of the connections in common. So going to those events is part of it. And then as well as doing the membership intake process, which each chapter does on their own. And that could also just be learning more about that fraternity or sorority more in depth like their founders, where they're from, their values. And so that's something to look forward to as well. And also maybe um, allocate your time to as well, going through that. Um, some of our chapters and their membership intake processes do um, take, maybe will be equivalent to taking another class. So just keep that in mind as well. That's great, thank you. Um, Jasmine, can you talk about any engineering-based sororities? So we do have one um, engineering-based sorority on campus, and that is um, the Collective Great Council. It is Phi Sigma Rho. They are a engineering-based sorority, and you do have to major in engineering to be a part of that sorority, unlike the um, other three sororities in our council where you just have to have an interest or just kind of um, are you are majoring in as well. But the Phi Sigma Rho is our engineering sorority on campus, and they do a lot of their meetings in um, a couple of the engineering buildings around campus, and they really um, work with um, women in the field to be able to um, connect and um, have career opportunities once they're done with college or for internships and things like that. Great, thank you. And I'll add, we don't currently have an engineering-based fraternity. We have hosted Triangle on our campus in the past, which is a, a national engineering fraternity. And if this is an interest for an incoming student, um, our staff, so Kelsey, JP, or I would be delighted to talk with any incoming student about potentially bringing um, an engineering fraternity back to our campus. Okay, so Alex, I have a couple questions for you um, regarding Panhellenic recruitment. And um, can you talk about um, rec uh, recommendation letters? So if you can just share what those are, and then do you recommend obtaining those for those who look to register for formal recruitment for Panhellenic? Yes, this is a great question. We get questions about letters of recommendation each year. Not a lot of people know exactly what they are, but basically um, an alumna of a sorority, um, whether that's someone that you know through a parent, a sibling, um, anyone who knows you, can write you just a nice letter um, and they can send it to their um, their sorority and they can say, hi, I really want you to consider this, um, this woman to be part of your group. It's just a little like nudge of positivity in your direction kind of. Um, they are not required by any means to go through our process. You can collect them and you can have them submitted on your behalf, but they are not required by any means. Um, so you can still go through recruitment and join a chapter without one. Great. And then Alex, um, there is a question about um, in a, if there's a limit to how many people will be offered a bid. Do you want to answer that from the Panhellenic perspective? Yeah. So um, 
it's this is kind of a complicated question because there's not an exact number where we're like, oh, no more. Um, each chapter has a set amount of people that they are going to be able to take into their organization, to their group. Um, and it fluctuates each year just depending on how many women go through recruitment, how many women are active in the chapter. It depends on a lot of different things. Um, but we guarantee a bid to anyone who maximizes their options all the way through preference night, um, which you'll understand more if you come to our Panhellenic Live Q&A. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more too if you register for our process. But um, yes and no, there's a, there's a limit, but there's it's also kind of complicated. So. That was good. And what I'll add to is um, the the limit of folks uh, that each chapter can take, the number that they can take is really based on how many register for recruitment. And so that number does fluctuate based on how many people indicate interest. And then um, Bennett, can you answer this from IFC? Yeah, so the IFC, there isn't a set uh, number. It's not as structured as Panhellenic, so there is not a maximum number of bids that a fraternity can offer. Um, it is really more up to the students to find out and kind of visit chapters themselves. Um, but no, we do not regulate that, and there is not a cap on the amount of bids a fraternity can give out. Also, we'll add with IFC, um, you can receive multiple bids for multiple chapters. So that's why we really encourage you to maximize the experience and get to know as many chapters and as many people to find your fit in the community. And for MPHC, um, again, since you do have to have a college uh, GPA or established GPA, um, it gives you more time to get to know them. And then once you have that opportunity to build that relationship, then they will um, tell you about how to join um, through their membership. Stephanie or Jasmine, did you want to add anything about limits on number of members? Sure, I'll, um, it kind of varies for CGC chapters on what the chapters kind of want to bring in, what they can feasibly bring in um, for um, giving out uh, bids or membership. Um, it's really up to the chapter as a whole and they'll um, go through the process and decide that before they um, go through the whole process as a whole, so. Yeah, and just to add, add on to what Jasmine was saying, um, since uh, MGC chapters are a little bit smaller, um, it is definitely up to the chapter and what they can handle um, and or what they are, you know, uh, prospectively um, trying to take on as well. So it is definitely dependent on them. Um, but like I said, we're always looking to grow. So as many as we can get as usually. <laughs> um, if there's a lot of interest, we always try to maximize that. Great. Let's go ahead and talk about the fees for joining. So we have a couple of questions that relate to the annual costs um, for joining. And so if we could just each hear from, um, from each of you briefly. So Alex, could we start with you with Panhellenic? Yeah, so there is a $50 registration fee. So during the summer, um, the registration fee is $50 and then it increases in September. Um, but that's just, um, the price that we need to reserve spaces and run the process. Um, and then for your first year of membership, um, if you're living out of the chapter facility, which is typically what first year students in the fraternity or sorority do, um, the cost per year, I think is about $1,200 if you're a new student living out of the sorority, but it varies by organization. Um, yeah. Great. Okay. Jasmine, can you talk about costs for CGC? Yes. So costs for CGC, um, on average, members will pay anywhere from $85 to $185. Usually members, um, new members will pay a um, new membership fee, but that usually covers um, some kind of pin or name tag or just kind of the recruitment cost. We don't, um, none of our chapters have upfront um, recruitment um, cost as most of our, all of our recruitments are free, but they do tend to um, include a little bit of money into that on their membership fees. But our um, chapters usually try to keep the cost a little bit lower as um, they're anywhere from $85 to $185. So, yeah. Great, thank you. And then Stephanie, can you talk about MGC? Yeah, so similar to CGC, um, there is maybe an initiation fee um, and that can range from $100 to $200 and that does cover maybe like a lime jacket or other um, paraphernalia that you would get with your letters on it. Um, but generally, an annual um, or each term would be $100 or annually would be maybe $300, $200, $300 um, per year. 
Cool. And then Bennett, you want to talk about IFC? Yeah, so um, we do have a recruitment process that is free. Uh, you do have to register to participate in IFC recruitment, but it is free. Uh, typically, what we'll see from first year students is that they live in the residence halls. Uh, when they live in the residence halls, they normally pay a live out fee for a fraternity, and that does vary from chapter to chapter. The average live out fee is $415 a term. And then the average live-in fee, which would be what second and third years typically do, uh, would be $2,750. Uh, just remember that this includes housing, um, meals, uh, and just a lot of other things. Uh, just for some reference, the typical residence hall with food is about $3,800 uh, per term. So it is normally cheaper to live in a fraternity house uh, than it is to live in the residence halls. Great, thanks Bennett. And I'll round it out with NPHC. So NPHC generally has one-time joining fees that you pay upfront um, when you apply for membership. Um, and those can range anywhere from $800 to about $2,000. And so um, that's part of doing your research that Stephanie mentioned earlier. And again, our publication on the NPHC um, page can give you a range of those prices as well as the average. Um, so next I have a question for Stephanie. And so Stephanie, I'm hoping that you can talk about how do, how does someone decide what process is right for them? And if you can talk just briefly, what is the difference between the three councils that have sororities? Yeah. Um, so I guess first to just address, um, first question, um, would be that, um, or what, I'll, I'll first like start the differences. So um, MGC, um, it's a, a governing council for, um, that governs over uh, multicultural fraternities and sororities. So our council also encompasses fraternities. Um, and then CGC, um, they encompass mainly sororities now, but in the past we've had fraternities, but those are more interest-based, um, like major-based um, chapters. And then CGC is, um, or sorry, Panhellenic is strictly um, sororities. So, um, and they are uh, majority house chapters as well. And then what was the first question as well? Sorry about that. How do you decide um, which process you participate in? Yeah, uh, so that's actually a really interesting question because I've kind of um, was interested in all of them. So like, as I mentioned in my personal stories, I looked around. So I looked into CGC and THC as well. And it just kind of was, for me, what stood out was being able to be with people who have similar experiences to me or similar backgrounds to me. But even during my process, I was able to meet um, a lot of really awesome people that I even am friends with now or like even work with now. So I, I definitely just kind of say whatever fits best for you, where you feel the most comfortable and where you feel um, that you and the people you're around are going to be like some lifelong friends. And then, and then I'll highlight to NPHC as well has sororities. Um, and so um, if you're interested in joining a sorority, there would be four councils um, to explore. And um, NPHC are, are historically African-American fraternities and sororities. But thank you, Stephanie, for giving, um, giving us that insight. Um, next, um, I'm gonna have a question for Bennett. Um, so Bennett, can you talk about um, if, if, uh, if you choose to not join um, Greek life as a first year student and choose to, to look at it later? Are there opportunities to join later? Uh, yes, there are a lot of opportunities actually to join later and it is not uncommon for uh, second, third, and fourth year students to be interested in fraternity life, especially the IFC. Um, our chapters are actively looking for students that are not just first year students as those uh, older students are oftentimes leaders or become leaders uh, in their chapters. So yes, if you are not a freshman student, uh, we definitely are looking for you and recommend checking us out. Um, but yeah. Great, thank you. And I'll add too, for our house chapters, um, we often get questions of, um, it, you know, are you required to move in right away? And Alex alluded this a little bit earlier. And so um, uh, generally first year students live on campus. So we have our first year live on requirement. Um, there is the opportunity to move into some fraternities and sororities that participate in the affiliated housing program. More details are online about that if you'd like to learn more. Um, but generally students are moving in their sophomore or their junior year. Um, and if, if their chapter uh, has a house or if they have a live-in requirement. 
Um, Jasmine, could you talk a little bit also more just about joining opportunities for upperclassmen? Yes, of course. So CPC, we do often see a lot of um, um, older students join because it, it takes a little bit to sit into your major, get kind of um, um, settled. And since we are tend to mostly about academic and interest based, um, um, individuals tend to want to join our chapters a little bit later as they can establish themselves. And like Bennett said, these um, we really look for these individuals as they are established leaders and they want to they want to do more. They want to get involved. And there's a lot of opportunities, no matter um, what um, course of um, schooling you're in or like how further like we get a lot of fourth years joining. So there's no limitation at all for that. So we really look for those individuals to come and join us and we reach out to as many of them as possible and just hope that they'll come in. We're, we want everyone, we love them. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, we have about two more questions and then certainly folks um, that are still with us, please um, type any into the Q&A that are still lingering for you. But um, let's talk about academic requirements. And so Bennett, I know you talked about this in our program, but um, is there a GPA requirement for fraternities and sororities? And so Alex, I will start with you. Yes, yeah, so each um, Panhellenic sorority, I'm not going to speak on behalf of CGC and MGC because they're here and they can explain that, but um, Panhellenic sororities do um, all have an academic uh, GPA requirement to join. Um, and then once you become a member, there's a GPA requirement to stay in good standing as a member um, because this is how we keep our members accountable for, you know, putting school first. Um, and I'll turn it over to Bennett to talk about fraternity. Yeah, so similar to what Alex said, uh, there are GPA requirements both to become a member of an IFC chapter and to stay in as a member of an IFC chapter. Uh, I would say typically the average uh, GPA requirement for joining is about a 2.75, but it can be higher uh, based on the chapter. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I'll turn it over to uh, one of the other councils. Stephanie, do you want to talk about academics and uh, requirements for MGC? Yeah, of course. So, um, like stated in, earlier in the um, presentation, that some chapters do require for in order to join um, to already have that established GPA. So, making sure that that is checked off, but as well as to maintain a GPA, um, it's roughly about like a 2.5, but it's different for each of our chapters as well. Um, and then even for some chapters, a little bit higher. Great. And then Jasmine. Yeah, so um, a, a couple of our chapters are about 2.4, 2.5 for GPA requirements. Um, uh, there are 3.0 requirements for some, and it kind of just uh, varies from chapter to chapter. So just um, look into that and see like kind of what it is. Um, but there are requirements to stay in and stay active as well, usually around the same um, 2.4 to 3.0, somewhere around those depending on the chapters. Great, thank you. Um, there are a couple more questions that I'm going to have our staff answer, but first I just want to turn it over. JP or Kelsey, is there anything else that you wanted to, to add um, uh, as, as we've um, had this discussion today? I would just like to add, again, explore as many processes, uh, as, many processes as you would like um, in recruitment. We have a lot of variety. As you see, we have four councils that have um, sororities a part of it. And then we have uh, three councils with uh, fraternities. And so I would say really explore, really see what fits you um, in that aspect. There's a lot of great opportunities, some more structure, some more loose. Um, but again, it's all about building that relationship or that connection to the individuals that um, you're going through whatever process is because we believe everybody do have a place in our community. Um, and if you don't see a place in our community, then we can explore how we can help you find um, your place in our community. Again, going green is one of the greatest experiences, or is one of the greatest experiences that you can be a part of in college. Um, and it has long lasting benefits um, once you join um, the community, as these students right here have said. And I'll add to that before, before we jump to you, Kelsey, for just a sec, because it relates to a question that just came in as JP was talking. Um, and, uh, you know, we do want to emphasize this is a lifetime membership uh, decision that you're making and something that um, Kelsey, JP, and I, we're all members of uh, fraternities and sororities, so um, we're also part of that lifetime commitment. Um, 
And, uh, but we do know that sometimes folks um, explore opportunities that exist. They might join a chapter and then um, decide it's not for them. Um, there is a process that folks can either decline a bid if um, they haven't been initiated yet or decline a membership, um, what membership has been extended to them. Um, or if they have already been initiated, then they can choose to resign from that organization. It's ultimately like quitting. Um, we certainly hope that doesn't happen. Um, you know, we hope that each of our processes are set up in a way that people can find their forever home, um, but there, there is a process to be able to um, disaffiliate if that's what a student chooses to do. But again, if you're initiated, if you're initiated for, for your life into that one organization, and so each of our chapters has um, a multi-step process where they do education and um, provide information about um, their fraternity or sorority so that um, students are making informed decisions when um, they, they um, are joining and being initiated. Um, but we know college is about choices. And um, one of those exciting choices is whether or not you want to join a fraternity or sorority and then picking the one that's the right one for you. And it's a mutual selection process. So they want, they need to want you to join just as much as you want to join as well. So there is that, that exchange also. So Kelsey, did you want to add something else? Yeah, um, all of those things I ditto. Um, and just to share briefly, I'm originally from the East Coast. Um, and my organization provided me like some of my first friends when I moved to Oregon, all the way on the other side of the country. Um, so it really is um, an experience that touches your lives in a lot of different ways that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Um, but one thing I wanted to share before we get to our last question and wrap up tonight, uh, we've said it many times throughout this presentation, but please, please, Please go to our website. Um, there's so much information there. So if you go to our website, there's a banner right on the front page that says welcome new students. If you click on that, it'll take us, uh, take you to a web page that we built specifically for incoming students to really guide you through um, a lot of the information. Uh, there's a lot to learn and to, to sift through with Fraternity and Sorority Life, and we want to make it as easy as possible so that you can make that informed choice like Leslie was talking about. Um, so we have recorded videos on that web page, um, information on how you can talk to these wonderful students during virtual office hours um, and get some one-on-one -on -one time. Um, the website, good question, I just saw that pop up in the Q&A, is oregonstate.edu slash CFSL. Uh, if you just go to OSU's website and type in Fraternity and Sorority Life, it'll also um, take you to the correct place. Uh, but we really hope you check out that website and a lot of the resources we have on there. There's tips for recruitment experiences, questions to ask a chapter as you're going through a recruitment process. Uh, so we really hope that that's a valuable resource for you. And then that's also where you'll find the live Q&A sessions for each of our councils, uh, where you can um, ask some, some of these questions more in depth and really dive into what their joining process is like, what the membership experience is like um, to help you make that informed choice um, and get to know some students before you come to campus this fall because we're so excited to get to know you this summer. So that's that's my little tidbit to add to the conversation. Great, thanks so much both uh, Kelsey and JP. Well, we'll round it, round it out with our last question and um, it'll kind of bring us back to where we started regarded, um, regarding COVID-19. So we know that um, this is a unique environment that we're in um, this year as, um, as our world really um, responds to the current pandemic. And there are still a number of unknowns and um, our community is no different than many other facets of OSU that we are still um, awaiting guidance. And then um, once we have finalized guidance, we'll be able to distribute final plans. But we do, do know that some students um, are gonna be participating fully virtually. Um, particularly in the fall. And our fraternities and sororities are working to respond to that and ensure that they'll have engagements um, for their members that are fully virtual as well. We know that um, uh, uh, there will be some e-campus students that aren't typically e-campus students that you know would prefer to be in campus or on campus, excuse me, and um, will be participating um, in student life via e-campus and virtually. And our fraternities and sororities are working to um, make sure that they can uh, provide access to their experience 
to eCampus students to online to virtual students. Um, we'll tell you that the spring term was great practice in this. Uh, a number, the majority of our chapters, um, of, of our 45 chapters learned how to provide um, a virtual experience for their members via um, uh, Zoom chapter meetings. Um, we have chapters that are doing, of course, virtual recruitment, um, that did fundraisers online, um, that learned how to do service online. So um, we know that our, our chapters are adapting, adapting to this. And so um, what we would recommend for eCampus students, um, if you are planning to be an eCampus student beyond just this fall or just beyond the school year, ask questions to the chapters that you're most interested in. Um, what participation would be like during your, um, your undergraduate membership experience as an as a eCampus member? Um, that's a great thing to talk to a chapter about. So with that, we've um, neared an hour, so we are gonna go ahead and close. But I do wanna say thank you so much to our panelists. You did a fantastic job. Thank you to our staff um, so much uh, for, for your work. Thanks to our attendees. We're delighted that you could join us tonight. Um, in closing, we'll just say um, use this time uh, to do your research and learn about our organizations. Please join us for those uh, frequently asked question sessions that each of our councils talked about um, so that you can learn more. Come to our office hours. And then of course, um, go Beavs, go Greek. Thanks everyone.